So Apple has just announced its new range of iPhones and a big part of that announcement was about the new processor, the Apple A12 Bionic. Hello there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. If you wanna find out about the A12 Bionic and how it compares to other smartphone processors, please let me explain. Okay, first of all, a quick few things about the A12 itself. We know that it has remained as a hexa-core processor with two high-performance cores and four uh, high-energy efficient cores. It's got an Apple-designed GPU with four cores in it, and it's got an NPU in it for doing all of that neural network processing. Now, obviously, we're gonna make comparisons to the Kirin 980, which was recently released, and I have a video about the Kirin 980 over on the Android Authority channel, and I'll link to that here in the description below. There are lots of similarities between these processors. First of all, they're both built on seven nanometers, and of course, there's a discussion who is the first on seven nanometer. Huawei say they are, Apple say they are. We, it looks as if that um, Apple actually have them in consumers' hands, first of all. Of course, both uh, Huawei's phones and Apple phones have been in production now for several weeks leading up to these announcements. So the only people that know which one was actually the first one to roll off the production line is TSMC, and I suppose they're not going to tell us. But we've got two major processors now that are on seven nanometers. Also, both processors have neural processing units, and they both made a big thing about the power of these neural processing units, and they both in fact showed people gesture recognition on basketball courts. So it's almost as if they both kind of had spies in each other's camps. They knew what they were gonna be showing because they both showed basketball courts and human uh, gestures on that. Now, the big difference between them, of course, is that Apple are using their own designed cores. Huawei are using cores designed by ARM. The Huawei processor, the Kirin 980, is an octa-core, and the uh, Apple processor is a, a hexa-core. Now, Apple also said that their two higher performance cores are actually now 15% better than they were in the A11, and it looks like the four energy efficient cores have remained exactly the same. They are more efficient, and that's mainly due to the move down to seven nanometers. Of course, we know that we're probably gonna get more chips announced by Qualcomm and uh, Samsung over the next few months. Traditionally, Qualcomm announced things around the end of the year in kind of the December timeframe, and kind of Samsung don't really announce their processors, they kind of just turn up in one of their phones, they may announce it a little bit before, and they kind of give us details like six months later about what really is going on on the inside. But we know there's gonna be a next generation Exynos, and there's certainly gonna be a next generation Snapdragon. So what I've done is I've kind of extrapolated the uh, performance measures. We know that the uh, A12 is 15% better, for its high efficiency cores. We know what the Kirin 980 will do for Geekbench uh, single threaded according to Huawei. And we know what the current Samsung and Exynos processors do. And we can guess that they are also gonna see a 10% or 15% improvement in performance, may, maybe even more. So what I've done is I've got some very speculative, very much guesswork approximation uh, figures of where we're gonna be uh, kind of at the beginning of next year in terms of all of the mobile processors from Apple, from Qualcomm, from Samsung, and from uh, Huawei. So let's dive into some graphs. Okay, so what we have here is a graph for Geekbench single score. And the top of the graph there, I've put the A12 Bionic. Uh, Apple for a long time have been the king of single threaded performance. And I'm taking this 15% increase from the A11 to the A12, and I'm gonna guesstimate that it's gonna have a score of 4,800 or maybe even higher. Next down the line still remains uh, powerful there, the A11 with its score of 4,250. And I'm now gonna suggest that the next uh, Exynos processor, which will have probably the next custom core from Samsung, so that'll be the Air Mongoose uh, version four, I'm gonna put them up here at 4,000 uh, 100. And that, the reason I'm doing that is because we can see here you've got the Exynos 9810 with a score of 3,700. I'm factoring in a 10 to 15% uh, performance increase and it's going to go up to 4,100. Now, if uh, Samsung managed to pull out an even greater 
performance increase, then we could be edging into the territory of the A11. But there's no doubting it, the A12 still will probably remain the king of single threaded uh, core performance. The next generation Snapdragon, here I'm basing that on the fact that it will have semi-custom A76 cores in it, very much like the Kirin 980. So we'll be expecting similar scores. And I'm just gonna say that Qualcomm managed to tweak a bit more out of it, and they're gonna get 3,400. We know what the Kirin will do because they've already announced that, 3,360. And then here at the bottom is the uh, result for the current Snapdragon 845 at 2,450. Now notice here the graph starts at 2,200 over there on the left. So don't, you know, don't get a misrepresentation of the scaling here, but it does start at 2,200. It just shows you the growth from the Snapdragon 845 right up to the A12 Bionic. So as I say, clearly Apple remains the king of single threaded performance. And I have a whole video over on the Android Authority channel about why are Apple chips faster than Qualcomm's chips, faster than everybody else's chips. And I can tell you a lot of that to do is with because of the amount of cash they put into it. Now here's an interesting thing. They mentioned that they have 6.9 million transistors in their SOC, Apple did. And actually a few days ago, Huawei announced their processor has 6.9 million transistors in it. So you have two processors here that both have 6.9 million transistors. But what are they doing with all those transistors? For example, the A12 is a six core, a hexa-core setup, whereas the Kirin 980 is an octa-core setup. So there are two less cores in the uh, A12, but yet it's still got the same number of transistors. But then you've got the NPU, which they're saying is now an, an octa-core NPU in the A12. It looks like it's a dual core one in the Kirin 980. But according to the engineers I've spoken to, uh, NPUs don't take up that much space in terms of silicon, in terms of actual numbers of transistors. Also, it's only a four core GPU, uh, whereas the Kirin is a 10 core GPU, and yet we still have this thing, they're both using 6.9 billion transistors. So where are all the transistors being used on the Apple one? Well, I'll say two things. One is cash. They're putting in lots and lots of cash because cash makes a big difference. And secondly, they're making very, very complicated cores. I mean, they're getting performance out of four GPU cores that uh, kind of Huawei are saying they need to do with 10. So that means they're very fat cores. They've got lots of logic in them, lots of stuff going on, so they can produce that performance in a, a single core. So it's interesting, 6.9 billion transistors in both, but those have been used very, very differently to come up with very, very different designs and of course, very, very different performance characteristics. Okay, let's go over to the Geekbench multi-core scores. Now again, just to reiterate, this is all speculation, kind of guesswork, estimations on my part. Now the thing to remember here is that the uh, A11 and the A12 are both hexa-core processors, which means they will be slower when it comes to multi-core uh, benchmarking. So let's start at the top here. I am going to estimate that the Apple A12 is going to be hitting around 11,500 for the Geekbench multi-core score based on the fact that the A11 has a score of 10,300. They've tweaked the high performance cores a bit. They haven't tweaked the uh, energy efficiency cores. So that's the number that I've done some calculations. That's where I reckon it's going to uh, get out to. But if we look at the next generation Exynos processor that we're going to see, I'm going to say that's going to be faster in the multi-core than the Apple A12. And I'm doing that on the basis that the Exynos 9810 was very, very close to the A11, didn't beat it, but it was very close. And I think that with the improvements that uh, Samsung are going to bring to that next generation of processor, it's actually going to beat uh, Apple there on the uh, multi-core. And of course, this isn't the first time that multi-core scores have been beaten by Apple. Kirin did, uh, Huawei did that with the Kirin 970, I believe. Going down the graph further, the next Snapdragon is also going to be very, very good on its multi-core score. Again, because it's an octa-core setup rather than a hexa-core setup. And I say it's going to match that of the A12. The Kirin 980, again, this is an approximation because they haven't told us what the actual score is. But I'm basing it on what their single-threaded score is and then what else we know about the uh, cores uh, based on previous uh, performances. I'm gonna say it's gonna be a little lower than the next generation Snapdragon, but still also way up there, better than the A11, and certainly approaching the speeds of the A12. And lastly there on the graph, we have 
the uh, Snapdragon 845 with 8,400. And again, notice the graph starts at 8,000. So don't uh, take that into account when you're looking at the relative differences here between the different numbers. Now really when it comes to multi-core, we should see the octa-core processors beat the hexa-core processors just purely because there are more processors doing that multi-core processing. Okay, so there you have it. Now I want to repeat again, these are all estimations. I've just done some calculations based on previous experience, uh, performance, based on what the companies are saying, and I will revisit this when the actual d devices come out. Of course, the A12, we're gonna see that in a, maybe, what is it, a week or so. We're gonna see the uh, Mate 20 in a couple of weeks. We're gonna see announcements from Qualcomm in December. So all of these numbers are gonna be firmed up and become, gonna become concrete, but it's gonna take a little while for that to happen. So this is my guess about what the landscape's gonna look, out, uh, look like uh, in 2019. And I'll be interested myself to see how wrong or how right I am here in these guesses, because I could be completely wrong. So it will be really interesting. In fact, do tell me in the comments below what your guesstimate is about the different levels of performance uh, for the upcoming trips. I'll be interested to see whether you agree or disagree with my numbers. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explained. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Please do subscribe. Do hit that notification uh, bell icon so that you get told every time I drop a video. And well, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.